Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. With Bitcoin unchanged, Ethereum has violated yesterday's highs. Um, Bitcoin hasn't done that yet. I think there's a good chance though it is doing that and it should really, if this is going to push any higher, hold the $20,100 level. So let's take a look at what we're doing here. The view is still that we will make a new low at the moment. Um, but as we said, we're open to other possibilities, other ideas, and um, did post it yesterday in the Telegram and Discord member group that it appears that Bitcoin and Ethereum are going to violate their um, highs from yesterday, which Bitcoin hasn't done yet. Yeah, there's a few dollars missing. Ethereum, however, has done it and could even push a bit higher, but I refer you to the Ethereum video for that. Now, moving down in five waves is at the moment still on the table. As long as we stay in the green box, yeah, we can push short term a little bit higher. So that sort of is my current assumption that there is a good potential that Bitcoin can short term push higher, which means short term um, bullish, slightly bullish, which doesn't mean it's going to break out guaranteed to the upside. But it, there is some short term bullish potential. I wouldn't rule out that we're going to break this trend line, but then that we will see still another low. My assumption will be that we are going to see another low until we have to the upside five waves as complete. We can count five waves complete. We can't do that at the moment. We can't even count three waves complete yet. Um, well, we could, but it's not ideal yet. I think there is a chance to push higher. So to have a chance to make five waves, it needs to push higher. We, we could already count five waves complete A, B, C. Now, um, or even, and I think that even fits a bit better, W, X, Y. Yeah, um, but here I'd like to push a bit higher in the Y wave. Let's see, let's see what we what we have on the table here. Um, so for me, I think we have two, let, let's zoom into the most imminent price action here. So as I said, we've got first possibility that we are in this third wave there, yeah, circled, which will make one more low. And that we have here um, an A, a large B, so that wave B is still ongoing and wave C is coming down afterwards. Now I'm thinking if, um, I'm just thinking this would look probably better as a WXY, yeah, as I said yesterday, I think already. Um, and then we have here in the last leg an A, B, C. So what we could do is we are giving this, and I think I'm going to do that now because it just looks better, it fits better. Um, we give it, oops. So yeah, we give it a W, X, Y, say that this was the wave W this the X and the Y is still coming. No, the X needs to be here. So W, X, Y. And in the, um, and that we are here currently in this sort of wave X in this connector wave that we also have a W, X, Y. So you can have a W, X, Y within a W, X, Y. This is possible. I regularly get questions about that. That is not a problem, but it's getting these are normally quite complex corrections, but as you can see, um, Bitcoin is doing quite a bit of a complex correction. So that's perfectly fine. WXY and then in the, no, I would need to move that here, sorry. So, and then in the wave Y, that's now interesting. We have an A, B, C. And then I would say in the C wave, we, have a potential to count this here as an impulse. Yeah. So, which doesn't mean the whole move is impulsive. It just means that within this correction, A, B, C, one element is impulsive, which can take us a bit higher. And there is a potential to count it as a one, two, three, four, and there will be one more wave up in a five. So therefore I'm looking at possibly breaking the last high. For that, however, yeah, I mean, 
we need to hold first of all the 19,750 level to make that work to push higher but in the very short term even here that um, previous swing low which is 20,000 so if it is impulsive it should really hold that but if we want to minimize or get a bit more clarity even then we're looking here in the very short term and look at 20,100 the 78.6 percent fib level so if we lose that then i think that's already so 20,100 is already in my opinion an indication we are not going to push higher here there is one more chance where we'd say okay you know as i said to you here wave one two three four five but the wave four maybe wasn't finished so maybe we'll see here something like our um loved triangles you know so maybe here wave A, B, it's too early to confirm that, right? B, C, D, E, and then we push higher. Bitcoin likes to do these things, especially in a wave four. So we need to be ready for a bit of sideways action here. Um, but yeah, that is certainly a good possibility here that we are doing this. And if we have this pattern, A, B, C, in a wave Y of X, you know, then it should eventually take us down to one more low. So we could measure targets, same as we did in the Ethereum video, and we can say we take the length of the wave W here in yellow and measure the one-to-one -one ratio. That should take us to 20,580. So at 20,580 we've got a target, so let me move or at least a resistance level where we could bounce off from. And the next target would be 21.9k. It's the 1.618 extension. So there's a chance to get to one of these two levels. So 20,600 basically. If that gets broken, there's a good chance to get to 21,900. Now another way of measuring targets is to use the ABC waves, taking the length of the wave A, and then looking at where we get out here. And here we've got the one-to-one -one ratio between waves A and C. At 20,700, so very close to the 20,600 target. So there's a bit of a cluster of resistance there, and the 1.618 extension would also take us very close to the other one here at 21.9k. This here takes us to 21,780, pretty much. Yeah, so we've got two zones of resistance in this larger green box. Let's see if we react to one of them, and we should see them some resistance there um, at one of these. And then we should come down. Now, the only exception when I would say we are not going to come down once more, and this is already a breakout, is this one that we are seeing here five waves to the upside. A wave one, done. Wave two, done. Wave three currently in progress. Wave four would be done afterwards, and then a wave five. So if we see five waves, you know, this can fail at three waves. And if it fails at three waves, it was nothing different than a WXY. Um, only if we see a fourth wave and a fifth wave, then there is really good evidence that we are pushing higher and that we're going to do a break, a breakout. Yeah. And in addition to that, if we then break out above 22.1k, that is when the overall context of the chart flips bullish as well. So that's like a breakout, like a breakout signal. So again, always the questions, you know, 22.1k, if we flip bullish here, what does it mean? Do I buy in? I mean, you can do what you want. I would never tell anyone what to do. But my view is, and we talked about that before because we had the we had the situation before, I think at this inflection point here, where we said, you know, if we break through a certain level, I'm not gonna buy in. Yeah, I'll wait for the next retracement. And that was quite strong. So again, pushing through, even if we push a bit higher, but when you get through such an inflection point, a lot of breakout traders will come in. And um, however, then the, for me, it's always to wait for the next pullback and then to buy in, okay? Um, because your risk just gets too high when you buy as a breakout because you're buying far away from support, from key Fibonacci support. Good, but we get to that when, when, um, when we, let's say we cross that bridge when it's needed. So at the moment, that's my view about Bitcoin. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.